This is a place of history and it, it had a beauty to it. It had a history of people. It had all these things that we were used to and they were 100% destroyed, everything. When that sort of thing happens, you know that you're part of something really special and it's worth fighting for. The bushfires are worsening around the ACT. There's an awful lot of smoke around the area. Firefighters across the ACT are facing an uphill First, battle. First, the worst imaginable bushfire emergency is rapidly unfolding and changing in the suburbs of Canberra. The ACT is facing uh, its most uh, severe test in the face of uh, very significant fires, the most severe test in the history of the ACT. It was uh, a Saturday from memory. It was uh, 18 January 2003, it was a Saturday. And uh, we had been watching the fires and, and talked them over that, you know, this could be bad. And as I started driving in, you know, the sky turned black. It was surreal. It was, I mean, it was black as black can be. Began to hear some reports on the radio that, um, the fires had come much closer. It was terrifying, if I can be honest. I had a, a, little, a couple of emails from some students that were on the mountain, and then suddenly nothing, no communication. And that's when I became very concerned. It was actually two fire fronts that merged right on the mountain. And at almost the same time, the last people on Stromlo were fleeing down the only road out on the other side. The positive thing is that uh, no lives lost. It was close. My graduate student who was up here, Marlena, she had a uh, close call. By their accounts, the fire was like a fluid. It was almost like a wave of water. It wasn't like what you think fire being like. And that evening there was a little bit of footage from uh, on the television that made it clear that Mount Stromlo was probably affected, but we still didn't know by how much. The 50-inch telescope was the first fully robotic telescope in the world, uh, but to keep track of it, uh, it would send me messages. And while I was there, it sent me a message and said, temperature out of bounds, 73 degrees. And at that point, I was like, 73 degrees? There's, I knew there was a fire up here at that point. Um, so yeah, it was the last thing I'd ever said. It's like one something PM. Sent me that, uh, it's, it's last message on my phone. It's a shell of its former self. This was, from a scientific point of view, a huge loss. This telescope has a steel dome and it acted like a giant oven. So everything inside was completely burned, scorched, uh, but the dome, because it was steel, withstood. I got into my own car and convinced the policeman that I was responsible as director and I needed to see what was happening. And so they let me through the police line and I went up um, and everything was black and gray and the trees were frozen into a arched position because the winds were so horrific that they bent them all over and then the trees turned to charcoal, to ash just in an instant. It's interesting, you know, from, from a scientist point of view, um, the damage was the worst it could be because it was all of the telescopes, all of the laboratories, and the library. I haven't obviously thought about it that much for a long time. Um, The part of this building I really miss is the library because that, you know, it was a library that went back over 120 years and it was just had everything in it and it's all gone and irreplaceable. Stromla was and still is a very special place. The 
Advanced Instrumentation and Technology Center, which was born in some sense out of these ashes, is now world renowned. Things fade over time and that's natural and we'll remember that was a big day and it'll always be part of the, the, the lore of Canberra. In the beginning, people just wanted back exactly what they lost. They wanted everything just exactly the same. But when you're involved in science, you're always wanting, you're always thinking of the future. I think about it um, in many respects, and you know, this far down the track, you know, in many respects, the place is nicer than it's ever been. So it is, it was an end of an era, but it was an era that would have come anyways without the fire. It just happened like that. It really was a rebirth and it isn't the way you would choose to do it. But given that it happened, I actually think that Mount Stromlo is now further ahead in many ways than it otherwise would have been. I got a note from a school child in Queensland who said she broke her piggy bank to send us what was inside so that we could help rebuild. Now, when that sort of thing happens, you know that you're part of something really special and it's worth fighting for. And I think our staff knew that. And I, I, I have nothing but praise for the strength that they showed, the way they supported each other, the long hours they put in knowing that it was gonna come good, and it did.